Thank you for staying with us on Health Matters. I'm Dr. Mark Castellaw with Baptist Medical Group. Next, we have Dr. Stephen Bierman, a pancreas and gastrointestinal cancer surgeon and a new member of BMG. Welcome, Dr. Bierman, to being here today. Thanks, Dr. Castellaw. Now, what we want to talk about today is something we're hearing a lot in the news. A lot of celebrities, uh, unfortunately, are having this disorder. But uh, I know in my practice, I get patients asking questions about this all the time, and that's pancreatic cancer. So tell me exactly about the incidence of pancreatic cancer. Is it just because things are on the news, or is the incidence really increasing? I think a combination of both. Um, there's no question that the incidence, unfortunately, of pancreatic cancer is rising in this country. Um, there's about 50,000 new deaths each year related to the disease. And uh, the unfortunate fact is, is that the vast majority of patients that are diagnosed with this disease will die of the disease as well. Um, we are making progress with it, but again, to answer your question, the incidence is increasing. What are some of the typical if there are any signs and symptoms that people have uh, that may be suffering from pancreatic cancer? Sure. Um, one of the most common things that will happen is people will become jaundiced or they'll turn yellow um, or they'll have abnormalities on their routine physical examinations of elevation in their liver tests on their blood work. Um, if that's the case, that warrants further investigation. Unexplained weight loss or the onset of diabetes in an otherwise healthy person those should be indications that perhaps they might be uh, having early pancreatic cancer and should probably be evaluated. Explain to uh, the uh, viewing audience how diabetes and pancreatic cancer might be related. Um, we're not quite sure. We don't know if the pancreatic cancer causes the diabetes or the diabetes may influence the onset of pancreatic cancer. What has become quite clear in uh, population studies is that those patients that are diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, again, a relatively otherwise fit person, um, that that can be a harbinger of an underlying early pancreatic cancer. And again, that would warrant further investigation. Now, uh, patients, when they hear the word pancreatic cancer and, and heaven forbid should be diagnosed with pancreatic cancer, uh, it, it is a very devastating diagnosis to give someone, but there's uh, treatment and options available. There are. It's a very difficult diagnosis. Uh, uh, people do read the papers. They understand. Um, I think it's important, however, that you'll read about people dying from pancreatic cancer, but there are also many people that are pancreatic cancer survivors. Uh, Ruth Ginsburg, for instance, one of the, our Supreme Court justices here in the country, um, she is a pancreatic cancer survivor. So people do survive this disease. Um, it is a long road to travel. Uh, involves m many different doctors in terms of treatment. And we are making progress. Even if people die from pancreatic cancer, most people do live longer now than they did even five or 10 years ago because our treatments have improved. Uh, I wanted to have a, a guest here today that is a survivor of pancreatic cancer, Mr. Wilbur Milam, who uh, we found this uh, condition with him and, and he was referred to Dr. Bierman. Uh, tell me about uh, Mr. Milam's course. Uh, Mr. Milan was diagnosed with a cancer actually on the left side of his pancreas, which is a little bit less common. Um, oftentimes when cancers are discovered in that location, we cannot operate because they've already spread or metastasized, but fortunately his did not. He was a much older gentleman, uh, but we did uh, opt to operate on him, and he's probably four, three to four years out now from his surgery um, and uh, still living and thriving and doing very well. Um, and you tell me he helps with some of the uh, other cancer seminars that you have? Yes. One unique thing I've always found with pancreatic cancer patients is that they're always willing to pay it forward, as you would say. Um, they're always more than willing to talk with other patients that have pancreatic cancer or pancreatic family members that are affected by this disease. Mr. Milam has been very active in our community in terms of, he and his wife both, in terms of lending support to other patients and families with this disease. Well, the most important thing about Mr. Milam is he's the great grandfather to my grandson, uh, Grayson. That's the most important <laughs> thing. But uh, it's such a uh, wonderful thing to hear these survival stories and for people not to be uh, scared to death when, they, when they're given this diagnosis because there are options. Uh, other than surgery, what other modalities are there available for pancreatic cancer? Sure. When patients are diagnosed, we usually develop a treatment plan as a team. So it doesn't involve just myself or, or you, for instance, in, a, in a isolation. We 
really treat these patients as a team. And that team will generally include uh, the patient's primary care physician, a surgeon, an oncologist, and a radiation oncologist. And we look at the entire picture and we decide who goes first in terms of treatment and what that treatment will be. Well, thank you so much for being here today. Dr. Beerman, you're the best at what you do, and we really do appreciate you. Thanks, Dr. Castellan. Next on our show, what you should know about surgery for the smallest of the patients. Just talking about a grandbaby, so we're going to be talking about little bitty patients next on Health Matters.